Today, I am thrilled to have the opportunity to share with you some insights into the fascinating world of power and sample size for OneWay ANOVA. Before we begin, I kindly ask that you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel. Your support means the world to me and helps me continue to bring you valuable content. In research, during the planning stage of a study, the following questions are of particular interest to the investigators. How many samples are needed in order to have a desired power for detecting a meaningful difference? What is the trade-off between cost-effectiveness and power if only a small number of samples are available for the study due to limited budget and or some other considerations? One-way ANOVA, or analysis of variance, is an extension of the two-sample t-test. To perform an ANOVA, you must have a continuous response variable and at least one categorical factor with two or more levels. One-way analysis of variance, one-way ANOVA, is a statistical method used to determine if there are any statistically significant differences between the means of three or more independent groups. The F ratio in ANOVA, or analysis of variance, is a powerful tool that compares between group variance to within group variance. This comparison helps us determine whether there are significant differences between the groups being studied. By analyzing the variance between groups and within groups, we can gain valuable insights into the factors that influence the results of our research. In ANOVA, we compare between group variation to within group variation to determine between groups exist. If the between-group variation is small relative to the within-group variation, there is little evidence that the population means differ. On the other hand, if the between-group variation is large relative to the within-group variation, evidence suggests that the population means are not the same. Inferential Statistic The statistical inference process involves the use of a known sample statistic to arrive at a judgment about an unknown population parameter. By utilizing statistical inference, we are able to draw conclusions and make decisions based on limited information. This allows us to make predictions, test hypotheses, and ultimately make informed choices that impact our organizations and society as a whole. As we all know, a sample is a subset of a population. When we talk about samples and populations, we are essentially discussing the process of generalizing findings from a smaller group the sample, to a larger group, the population. It is important to recognize that the relationship between samples and populations is not always straightforward. There are various factors to consider, such as sample size, representativeness, and sampling methods, that can significantly influence the accuracy of our conclusions. The statistical inference process involves the use of a known sample statistic to arrive at a judgment about an unknown population parameter. Because we are relying on a sample, we expose ourselves to the risk that our conclusions about the population will be wrong. The risk of error is labeled as type I and type II error. Type I error is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. The probability of making a type 1 error is known as alpha. Alpha is also known as the level of significance. Alpha is the risk of finding a difference but in fact no difference. Type 2 error is the probability of fail to reject the null hypothesis when it is false. The probability of making a type 2 error is known as beta. Beta is the risk of finding no difference but in fact, a difference exists. Then the probability of rejecting a false null hypothesis is 1 minus beta, which is called the power of the test. In the field of statistics, power is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually false. It is a crucial concept in hypothesis testing and helps us understand the effectiveness of a statistical test. The power of a test is defined as 1 minus beta, where beta is the probability of making a type 2 error. Statistical power, then, is the ability of a statistical test to detect an effect if the effect exists. In practical terms, a test with high power is more likely to identify a true effect, while a test with low power is more prone to missing a real effect. 
Understanding and maximizing statistical power is essential for ensuring the validity of our research findings and drawing accurate conclusions. By increasing the statistical power of our tests, we can enhance the accuracy and validity of our findings, ultimately leading to more informed and dependable outcomes. Conventionally, a test with power greater than 0.80, or beta is less than or equal to 0.2, is considered statistically powerful. This means that there is a high probability of the test correctly rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false. A power value of 0.9539 means that if you go out and repeat the same experiment many times, taking a new random sample each time, about 95.39% of the time you will end up correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. The other 4.61% of the time, sampling error will cause you to fail to reject null hypothesis, even though it is false. It is good to know that the odds of getting a misleading sample are relatively small. As we all know, data analysis is an essential part of decision-making in any organization, and Minitab provides a comprehensive toolkit for statistical analysis for power and sample size. To study the effect of temperature on yield in a chemical process, 10 batches were produced at each of three temperature levels. The results follow. Construct an analysis of variance table and power value. Use a 0.05 level of significance. Choose STAT, ANOVA, one way. Select response data are in a separate column for each factor level. In response, enter 40 degrees C, 60 degrees C and 80 degrees C, click OK. Under analysis of variance table, the p-value for the factor is less than 0.05. This result indicates that the group means are different. The maximum difference between mean is 7.4, which is 36.2 minus 28.8. The pooled standard deviation is 4.28952. Choose stat a power and sample size one-way ANOVA. In number of levels, enter 3. In sample sizes, enter 10. In values of the maximum difference between means, enter 7.4. In standard deviation, enter 4.28952. Click OK. We obtained a standard deviation of 4.28952 from an ANOVA table. This value represents the measure of the amount of variation or dispersion of a set of values. If the analyst assigns 10 observations to each treatment level, the power to detect a difference of 7.4 units or more between the treatment means is approximately 0.91. This finding highlights the precision and accuracy of our research methods, showing a high probability of correctly identifying significant differences. One-way analysis of variance, one-way ANOVA is a statistical method used to determine if there are any statistically significant differences between the means of three or more independent groups. Power is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false. The power of a test is defined as 1 minus beta, where beta is the probability of making a type 2 error. Statistical power, then, is the ability of a statistical test to detect an effect if the effect exists. I am truly honored to have the opportunity to address you today. As we gather here, I am reminded of the importance of your support to our channel. Your dedication and loyalty mean the world to us, and for that, we are immensely grateful. In closing, I kindly ask for your ongoing support by liking and subscribing to our channel. Your support is invaluable to us, and we are truly grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for being a part of our community.